Naturalness of Inner Conversations. The object of this video, the purpose of this video, is to naturalize our inner conversations. And we do it from the perspective of in harmony with how we desire to be, how we desire to live, what we desire to experience. It is based on the following distinction from Neville Goddard's concept of all things exist now, the realization that all of eternity exists right now in the eternal now, which is discussed in many forms of spirituality, many philosophies, pointing and referring to the same idea that all of creation is complete. And what we experience is selecting in our imagination that what we desire to experience and move down in the journey, which is both revealing our inner conversations as well as inspiring inner conversations to bring forth what we desire and also experience inner wisdom, inner understanding, the evolution of the concept of self, self-realization, recognition of who you really are, living life the way you really want to live, and bringing forth peace, understanding, and relationship between yourself the sixth sense of the inner world, the five sensory experience, which includes people, environment, circumstance, and information, bringing us to a higher level of calm and understanding. Thus, the feeling of naturalness or the state of naturalness on the journey to bringing forth what we desire. Let us reflect upon this via a quote from James Allen. He says, Goodness, which is the aim of all religions, is distinct from religions themselves. Wisdom, which is the aim of every philosophy, is distinct from all philosophies. The unfailing wisdom is found only by constant practice in pure thinking and well-doing, by harmonizing one's mind and heart to those things which are beautiful, lovable, and true. Key distinction. Harmonizing one's mind and heart. We call this heart and mind relationship. The heart desires, the mind creates. We are given the two gifts, speech and mind. And as we order our inner conversations, we affirm and bring forth the accurate state of mind that is experienced with consistency, unwavering, lighthearted conviction that what we desire is already done in the already complete reality. And whatever shows up on the journey is actually in harmony and in contribution. We do this through the evolution of our beliefs, the evolution of our assumptions, the evolution of our thinking. As we do this, we ascend in the mind. And as Neville once stated, the best affirmation and the only effective one is an assumption which in itself implies denial of the former state. What are the former states? Well, we are moving through infinite states. And through these infinite states, we experience infinite realities or infinite potentials or infinite outcomes or infinite self-expressions. Now, what we're really interested in is the true self, the true way of being, the true identity, as we refer to in the Robert Diltz model. The vision, which is our desires, is actually a collection of visions and desires, that which we desire to experience in this lifetime, in this experience, in this journey that we call life. We call this life, life experience. Now, 
life experience is also, as I refer to, revealing and inspiring at the same time. Revealing if we are in former states or states of mind that aren't true to who we really are. And we can feel it from what we would call unnatural states, unnatural states of mind. What we want to experience is natural states of mind, naturalness. And the way we experience natural states of mind is by aligning it with a goal, with a vision, which is why in universally all personal development information, we speak of a goal. We speak of a vision. We speak of an outcome. And on the journey to the realization of this vision, we become more of who we are. How so? By affirming via our inner conversation, via our inner dialogue, via what we are imagining, the state of mind, the ideal state of mind, which would imply that we already have what we desire right now, not from a place of denial, but from a place of understanding that there is a journey to the fulfillment. As a result, our assumptions and our beliefs change, or more accurately put, we reveal the true assumptions and beliefs based on who we really are. Watch the last video I did in which I discussed this. And as a result, if we reflect back on the Robert Diltz model here, especially if you are an entrepreneur or bringing forth success using a certain methodology. Entrepreneurship is a methodology. It is, here I am creating products and services that could benefit the lives of others. I'm going to create them, put them out there, and offer them, and others will show up they will receive the product and service and they will compensate me for that. Be it money, be it barter, be it Bitcoin. That's how we do it in entrepreneurship. Now that's, you could say the textbook definition of entrepreneurship. There are many ways of going about entrepreneurship. And what many of us are discovering now is the spirit of harmony based entrepreneurship benefit for us, others, divine and evolution, which is very much in alignment with bringing forth the true self. And the purpose of the true self through bringing forth the desires is to reveal itself, understand the true identity and mold this world of ours into the kingdom of love. Thus creating a higher degree of spirit of harmony, harmony within harmony with the outer world, harmony with people, with environment, with circumstances, with information, bringing forth the kingdom of love. That's done through our capabilities, our behaviors, our environments, as well as ways that the conscious level of our being does not currently know. This is done by committing, affirming it to be done, assuming it to be done, and living from a place of love, which I sometimes refer to as flow, which I sometimes refer to as the ideal state of mind. Thus, going back to one of our previous videos, we talked about the NLP submodalities, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory. These are five senses, which we can experience in our imagination, in a scene that would imply that what we have is already so right now because it exists in the eternal now. We can also work with these five senses in our imagination via what I refer to as the four modalities, ones that have been very fruitful for me since I read Think and Grow Rich back in 2004, in which I primarily worked with auto-suggestion video and off audio affirmations. And over the journey, I discovered the power of self-talk through reading the book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. I also discovered the power of imagination as a result of working with Neville's information. 
I also, on the journey, discovered the power of environment, supportive environments, affirmative environments. So our goal is to maintain the ideal state of mind, knowing that in our imagination, we can imagine a scene or imagine a outcome or imagine something that would imply, and the key word is imply, bring us into the feeling of naturalness that what we desire is on the way. In the entrepreneurial journey, this can be very useful and very powerful. I work with sales professionals, sales teams, and one of the key, you could say secret, but it's not really a secret because this is talked about in many sales training organizations, is to bring the sales reps into an ideal state of mind. One where in that ideal state of mind, they approach the prospect and engage in a conversation, a mutually beneficial, natural, flow-based conversation. And they reveal through the conversations, the pains, the desires, the frustrations that the client or prospect is experiencing. And they're able to re-articulate it in a way, natural, subconscious, flow that builds the like and trust to the sales rep as well as the product and service. They're also able to visually, auditory, kinesthetically, olfactory, gustatory if needed, paint in the prospect's mind's eye what it would look like if it was true that they would be receiving the benefit of the product or service. And through the correlation of that particular experience and the prospect dwelling in that state for a period of time, it facilitates a buying decision. Now, this is not only useful in sales and marketing and leadership and team building, and you'll notice many great salespeople and many great leaders do this. But this is also important for our own self-persuasion. This is bringing us into an ideal state of mind. And I'm a huge fan of working with the auditory submodality, self-talk, audio affirmations. And they've always been beneficial for me. And even if you reflect back on your particular journey, as you had learned this information, chances are you were also consuming this information via auditory, audio programs, podcasts, videos on YouTube that you might not even be watching, but listening to what the speaker has to say. Through those audio conversations, you were learning about yourself. And it was bringing you into an ideal state of mind. This is how I feel when I listen to Neville's information. This is how I feel when I listen to the old lectures from Napoleon Hill. This is how I feel when I listen to many great communicators who can bring me into the ideal state of mind. The truth is that we can experience this through already created audios and videos, or we can create our own. Now, when I discovered this on the journey, I realized that I had something really powerful to work with. If you look at how many of us are influenced, it is through the consumption of audio information. Now, if we're being influenced by that information and the style of communication that's being presented in that information, what would happen if we understood the dynamics of those communication elements to a certain degree and recorded our own audio affirmations, our own audio programs, and our own inner dialogues. In other words, we orchestrated our own inner dialogues, and you can practice this wherever you are while you're driving. Speak about what you truly desire from a place of what we refer to as fourth dimensional thinking, how everything right now is actually in contribution. Recognize it. When you're driving in the car, say, this is in contribution to my entrepreneurial success because I enjoy this journey. 
I'm having a great time driving and experiencing the scenery. And I feel good. And this feel good brings forth ideas, hunches and perspectives. And observe how that information shows up within through inner dialogue, through inner conversation, as a result of bringing yourself into that state of mind. Neville says, your own wonderful human imagination is the actual creative power of God within you. So we're given the gifts, speech and mind. It is your savior. If you were thirsty, water would be your savior. If you need a job, employment would be your savior. Your imagination is the power to save you from whatever circumstance you now find yourself in. As referenced in the last video. My example. But I've had many examples on the journey. You have had many examples on your journey. This is what we were working with. We assumed it to be done, and via our imagination, we figured it out. How to solve it. Not only did we solve it, but this leveled up our confidence, our self-esteem, our understanding of who we are, our true self, the true identity. We release, we let go of, we disassociated from disempowering programming regarding of who we actually are. And we began to live more, experience more. And as he states here, you can experience your heart's desires through the use of your imagination. Heart and mind relationship. The heart desires, the mind creates. This is how the journey works. He says, nothing is impossible to your imagination. Your imagination is unlimited in what it can accomplish. If you can imagine something, you can achieve it. So that's a pinnacle, important, empowering belief that we want to continuously affirm in our inner conversations. All things are possible. And you have the ability to bring forth what you desire. So now in the last video, I talked about certain facilitators of beliefs. Let's bring this up in relation to the discussion, but we're going to focus primarily on mind. So we're going to focus on the top three layers of the Robert Diltz model. Vision, identity, and values and beliefs. And when cross-referenced with Neville's information in relation to Robert Diltz model, we can translate and associate and adapt and adopt vision to, I know it is done. We can adapt and adopt identity to I am, which represents the state of mind, the identity. We can adapt and adopt values and beliefs on the Robert Diltz model to I assume the inner conversations, the law of assumption. So here are some questions we want to ask ourselves on the journey each day to the realization of what is already there in the already complete reality. You're on the journey. And this can be our inner dialogue. Certainly, I've made this my inner dialogue more and more so each day. Certainly, when I connect with others, I encourage this inner dialogue, and thus, they were able to bring forth what they desire, which, for many, have reported to be a challenging year. Upon working with my clients and integrating this information, upon speaking with many who have been integrating this information, upon reflecting on my own journey, upon integrating this information, we noticed that we ascended past what many people saw as obstacles. Some way, somehow, we were still able to bring forth and exceed expectations by working with this information. And since now we are in the start of a new year, it is important to recognize the value of the ideal state of mind more so than ever before. And here's a way to do it. By adjusting our inner conversations, our inner dialogue. We are given the two gifts, speech and mind. 
to bring forth whatever we desire, to bring forth our true self, to create harmony with each other, to recognize the power of our imagination. Let's start with vision. How is this related to my desired outcome? How is it in relation to the desired outcome of another? Good questions to ask. If you recognize that we already are living in an existence where all things exist, even though it does not appear to us right now, it exists. And it is said that once we ascend from this body, we will see it all. We'll know it all exists right now. But until then, we have to practice faith, which is loyalty to the unseen reality, the vision. And you can see it right now. We call this sign and synchronicity. Ask within. Ask and you shall receive. Ask within. I've tried it many times. And it works. It works more now than ever before because I believe more now than ever before because A, I've proven it in experience and B, I've got the knowledge and understanding conceptually of how to understand the reference experience. Knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. And I believe I'm continuously understanding it more so each day we all are. And as a result, finding higher degrees of empowerment within. Understanding that we are the interpreter and the creator of this experience. Thus, if we are the interpreter and the creator of this experience, we can ask the question within how whatever it is that we're experiencing right now is related to the desired outcome. And it'll show up right then and there. And you will see the sign in synchronicity. And if you want to share it with others, which I believe is part of the true self, and you're inspired by that, then you can ask, how can I also reveal this as in contribution to my vision, whatever it is? The rejection in sales, making a proposition in business and it wasn't accepted, taking an action and it didn't go out the way it planned. How is it still in harmony and bringing forth your vision? How so? Or whatever five sensory experience or circumstance that shows up, asking the question. And as mentioned, if you're inspired by sharing it with others, then you can say, what is also similar that others are going through? Because we're all looking at the eternal now in this moment. So thus they're seeing the same thing. They may in be interpreting it different and thus having it reflect on the screen of space as individualized experience. But there must be parallels. Now, when we find that interpretation, the accurate interpretation, it'll bring us into our ideal state of mind. It is akin to having somebody sitting beside you who you would consider a mentor. And you reveal to them a problem that you're having in business. Maybe they say, or maybe you say, for whatever the reason may be, the information that I put out is not resonating with people. And the mentor, having the experience, reflects back and says, are you sure it's not resonating with the people? Or are they inspiring you and revealing what to talk about next? So then you go and you check the responses, the feedback. And the mentor helps you see what it is that your audience wants to hear. And as a result of that, you feel empowered. You bring yourself in the ideal state of mind. The truth is this. You could have done that with the mentor. You could have done that with yourself. We just may believe that we need to hear it from somebody else. And we can if we want. Nothing wrong with that. We can hear it from others and we can hear it from ourselves within. It's preference. Next is I am, which is the identity. How can I see this affirm my desired outcome? How can I see this affirm 
my desired outcome for another. Changing the meaning, reinterpreting, re-assimilating the experience in the imagination as in harmony and in relation, such as. Let's say on your entrepreneurial journey, you create a product, you put it out there and nobody buys. You may assume it to not be in harmony with your vision. When you make that assumption that it's not in harmony with your vision, you imagine yourself failing. You now step into a different state of mind. In that particular moment, you recognize something does not feel natural. I want to step back into, as Neville refers to here, the best affirmation and the only effective one is an assumption which in itself implies denial of the former state. I want to put off the former conversation and I want to step into the accurate conversation, one that reflects the vision. That is my ideal state of mind. I am the ideal state of mind. You can do that by asking the question. How can I look at this five sensory experience in a way that would imply that it is on the way? It is the journey to the destination, and this is part of it. Well, again, let's say you had the mentor beside you. The mentor says, well, you created this product. You put it out there. But do you really believe that this is a value? You reflect back and you say, actually, I don't. I really don't believe it's a value. And then you ask the mentor, how do I know what is a value? And the mentor says, you know the answer. You know what people are looking for. And you know that what people are looking for is what they're going to pay for. And because the mentor spoke with such conviction and affirmation, you went back into the ideal state of mind. And then from there, you brought forth the innovation. Again, this is what we do in consulting. Many consultants who understand the power of self-persuasion and representing in their own mind's eye the client as already having the success speaks to the client based on that identity. And they both affirm that same state of mind. They get into that state of mind and they dwell in there. And in that ideal state of mind resides the hunch and inspiration. It was always there. This is the eternal now. And we're all experiencing the eternal now from the individualized journey. So the I am state of mind, the vision, the experience, the five sensory experience, in our imagination, the experience that we saw in our imagination and the loyalty to that is knowing that it's done. I am is the state of mind, the state of being that we can choose to be in on the journey to the fulfillment, thus experiencing more joy and harmony. And then we've got our inner conversations. I assume. What are we assuming? So as mentioned in my last video, one of the reasons why we're a huge fan of the New Thought books from the early 1900s is because they assumed reality and believed reality to be a different way than, let's say, the collective conversation. And some of their viewpoints may have been polarizing, not accepted as the norm, but today they are accepted as the norm. It is a way of living now. If you look at how much life has changed over the years, the thinking of today is completely different on many regards, on many topics than it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, because of somebody's thought. They assumed it to be a certain way, and they said, this is a lot more of an empowering way to look at the circumstance. And they wrote about it. They assumed that inner dialogue and as a result of assuming that inner dialogue, they brought forth the experience, the proof in the outer world, five sensory experience. And you have the power to do it as well. And if you want, after you have brought forth based on experience, you can share the 
experience. You can reflect back on what you have learned from others and add to the discussion. This has been one of the main reasons why I started this channel. I said, not only back in 2013, do I want to share my experiences with how in 2009 I left corporate and by 2013, I transitioned out of my first business, figuring out what to do next. But I also know that I could learn more about this stuff. This was something that I heard Bob Proctor mention one time. When he built his first business, it was a cleaning business. He said he got it up to a certain level of success. And then he wanted to know what happened to him. Because what he was doing was he kept reading Think and Grow Rich over and over again. And his mind rearranged. So he went on the journey of understanding it more so and then teaching it and building it up more so. Well, you could do that if you'd like. And even if you don't do it in a formal setting like that, whether you teach it on YouTube or on Instagram or whatever platform, off the platform, physical platform, on the stage, you can infuse it in your relationships. You can infuse it in your organizations. You can infuse it in your family. And that has a double effect. It's an affirmation in itself. Because the more we have conversations on particular trains of thought, the more it affirms itself to be that. And as a result of the affirmation of it being that way, the mind reflects it in the five sensory experience. And so thus, as we go back to the earlier part of this conversation. We don't have to assume that what was given to us from whatever way, shape, or form is the absolute. We can ascend in our mind past it. Wisdom, he says, which is the aim of every philosophy, is distinct from all philosophies. So build on the foundation. Take this information that I share. Take the information that is available. These new thought authors have released their rights it's in the public domain. Many books from the 1900s in the public domain. I believe there was a reason for this. Is because they wanted us to build on this foundation. They wanted us to take this information, prove it in an equation, and continue to build and expand on the philosophy. Now, the way we do it, as James Allen states here, the unfailing wisdom is found only by constant practice in pure thinking and well-doing, by harmonizing one's mind and heart to those things which are beautiful, lovable, and true. Simply put, commit to the journey. Maintain your ideal state of mind. Make it a priority. From there, order the inner conversations. Align the inner conversation with the current state the one that is in affirmation and in contribution to the vision. And as a result of that, we change. The mind rearranges. The identity changes. And from there, all happens unto and through us, both on the journey and the destination. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.